everybody, it's Elizabeth Willits from Investing in Women. Welcome to this week's um, LinkedIn and Facebook Live. Thank you for people as they are joining. Today is a really hot day, so I really appreciate if you're joining live or if you're watching on the replay. Thank you so much for, for checking in today. Um, as we are chatting, if you can let us know if you can hear us all okay, give us a like or an emoji. Fab. But today I'm going to be talking to Tari Akoya and we're going to be talking all about how you can navigate the cost of living crisis. So Tari, she um, she is a well-being business manager at Morrison Morrison well, Wellbeing. So um, it's a really topical um, discussion that we're going to be having today, talking about how you can navigate the cost of living crisis that we're all reading about and um, we've probably noticed, we were just having a chat before we got on the call about how food shopping has increased, I mean everything has increased, so actually if somebody has been living under a rock and maybe just did the shopping, what is the cost of living crisis? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, first off, thank you so much, Elizabeth, for having me. i um, really excited to be part of this great initiative. I am all about investing in women. Um, so really happy and excited to be speaking with you on this. Um, in terms of the cost of living crisis, um, it is basically um, what I would like to describe it as, and just to give you some context as to where it's come from. The UK... Yeah, the you know thing, that why we're here, basically. So it's, it's, it's a perfect storm, a combination of different things. Um, the first one being, you know, Brexit. Um, prior to the pandemic, we obviously signed a Brexit deal and we decided to exit the, the world's largest trading bloc, essentially. And what that did is it reduced our consumer, um, our imports by almost 40%, which then impacted you know, uh, availability of resource and all these other things. And that affected household incomes by about £800 uh, per household. This is just in 2020, okay. right? But that was just the beginning of what would now lead to this moment here. Post then, we then go into this pandemic, everything goes into lockdown, um, businesses are heavily hit, people are being furloughed again, is impacting business profits and margins. Um, again, because the supply chain is already interrupted because of Brexit, the supply chain is already impacted because people are just not demanding the same level of services and goods because a lot of things are shut down. It again affects our economy. Yeah. Then we come into, out of Brexit now, we've got the whole Ukraine situation that then comes into the throng of already shaky situations. Um, and that again, as you meant, as you can imagine, it affects the, the, the gas and energy prices extensively. Whilst there may have been increases prior, I, would, we, I think it's fair to say that this war definitely then pushed certain things up from a utilities perspective, and even just the supply of certain goods and services into the UK. So that's what now brought us into this situation where we've got tight term monetary policy um, and we're seeing things like inflation and interest rates constantly going up. And us trying to combat that is affecting the price of goods everywhere. And that's what's creating this cost of living crisis that we find ourselves in. So inflation... I can explain it in his language. Inflation, yeah. uh, the consumer price index, all these things combined have now attributed to us facing what we call this cost of living crisis. So it's a combination of many things. It's just not one incident that's brought us to where we are. And which is why now when you're going food shopping, one week, well, for me, last month, I went to buy, um, I've got a little toddler and I love these Ellis, Ellis pouches, these smoothies. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. Beginning of the year. <laughs> Beginning of the year, I think there were three pounds, they're about or three pounds twenty something for a pack of five. Yesterday I bought them for three pounds eighty five. Yeah. Okay. Can you so, see the marginal skip in that price? And that's just one item in my shopping yeah, bag. All, so what all bad. Yeah, all the cumulative impact. Yeah. So before I could get away with doing a large big shop, as we do as women, with budget and say, you know, this is my grocery expenses for the month. 
I always do a large shop beginning of the month and then do top ups. And typically, I could get away with about 140, 150. Yesterday, I paid 186 pounds. Yeah. Okay. I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so I was like, okay. Going up. I mean, when is the cap? Because this is what, I, you know, you, I've been reading this an energy price cap that's going to go up even more. And will that affect, that will affect businesses as well as households? Oh. So therefore, will that feed into food shop price again? Oh, yes. Yeah. Things, I mean, we're interest rates are, are set to go up again in all swimmers and around October periods, we're going to see another increase, which then means then again that, you know, utility bills are going to go up, which ultimately means that food costs and expenses are going to go up because businesses can only do one thing. They either reduce their profits or pass that cost on to consumers, which a lot of them are doing pretty well. So we are definitely set for a very interesting winter. Um, I actually use this analogy a lot. I say winter is coming, and anyone who's a Game of Thrones fan yeah. will get what we mean by winter is really coming this time around. And I'm working with yeah. people that are in, in my remit. Um, just to give you some background, I manage our well-being business um, in in the wealth management space. So we provide financial education to employees across the UK. So we can cover the basics of budgeting all the way to investing, pensions, legacy planning, and all the likes. Yeah. And I am finding with the work that we're doing that we're starting to hear stories from people about what they are, what they are experiencing, what their own realities of this cost of living crisis is. And we're now finding a lot of people having to you know we, we speak with clients and it, some of it is very dark and gloomy because we are now having to help people that are now using food banks for yeah. example i consider myself to be very privileged and when i hear stuff like that it's heartbreaking because these are people that are your peers how yeah. did we get so far in our society for us to get to that space right and then on the other end of the spectrum, I'm also then speaking to people that are like, do you know what, just for us to do better in the winter, perhaps it's better for us to ask the office to be open more days. So maybe change the notion of hybrid working to maybe more permanent office days so that people can go into the office during the winter as opposed to staying at home because it'll be cheaper to utilize yeah, the cheap, office heating. Yeah, like petrol if you're driving. Yeah, I mean, it's different for different people, right? But I, I speak to, we speak to clients who are like, you know what, for me, it's better for me to just go to the office because I can walk to the office and I can have free heating. Yeah. Whereas there are people that are in a different situation that are a bit, you know, in better positions. They're like, well, actually, this works up cheaper for me because I don't have to do the commute. I don't have to pay for petrol. I don't have to pay for or for electric, um, for transportation. So it's different things to different people. Um, it's just trying to navigate it as best as you can and just making better informed decisions, I think, for us right now. Yeah, okay. So the situation is, basically, it sounds pretty, pretty bleak. So <laughs> food is probably going to carry on going up. Um, petrol is probably going to carry on going up. Heating is definitely going up. 100%. It's, everything's going up. So if your salary is staying the same, then you're obviously going to be having to survive on less. So what, I know there's a lot of politics, a lot of, there's so much change happening at the moment, but what is the government doing at the moment? Is there some, have I read that you get a rebate in the autumn? Is there something more? Yeah. What benefits can people claim that you might have able to help them at this time? Um, from a benefits perspective, I think there's definitely different things that people have um, and different initiatives. I think that the government is doing a uh, utilities cap um, that they are providing to individuals across the UK. But I know that there's different, different qualifiers for you to get that government uh, assistance around your utility bills, etc. I also know they did the, um, for, for single parent households, I know that they're also giving you your, your energy efficiency tax, I believe, something to the amount of 150 pounds. Again, you have to also just check what those conditions are. So I'll definitely ask you to leverage the government sites and assist them more. Yeah. Oh, 
Oh, sorry. Are you, are you still there, Terry? Sorry, everybody. I, I think she might have frozen. Um, I don't know if she's frozen just for me or for everybody. Let me just message her. Sorry about this. Here you go, here you go. Sorry, I just messaged you. We're back. Oh yeah, there we are, frozen. Hopefully, people said she's frozen. Hopefully everybody can see Tari again. Oh dear, I do apologize. I think technology is letting me down today. I'm not too sure what happened. All right, she's now. Thank you, thank you for everyone that's stayed on. <laughs> thank you um, so much for your patience. But I was just saying, I think in terms of um, government initiatives i think they are plenty out there but what i can advise you in terms of what you can do um as individuals um and these are some of the tips that we are giving to some of the you know employees across the uk if you're employed you will have an em em employee benefits platform that you can access and a lot of these eaps as we call them in our space they have discounts they have coupons for different things. And whilst it's not the pay rise you want, if you leverage some of these things, you are able to just free up some money for yourself. For example, a lot of these EAPs, so employee benefits platforms and, and, and all these dance things, they will have things like 6% off your grocery shopping if you shop in a Sainsbury's or 4% off if you're shopping at Tesco's. And I think there's actually a, a 5% or 7% with Morrison's? I'm not too sure, but different ones will have different things. Yeah. And if you're like me, if, for example, your your monthly grocery budget is, uh, for sake, sake of this example, £100, and you save 6% off, it may seem trivial, but that's £6 that you can dedicate to something else. Yeah. In a year, that's, um, what, £70-something pounds that you can dedicate to something else? In the same vein, I know we're in this era of Instagram and going eating in very fanciful places. And trust me, I love that too. Yeah. But just for the purpose of making sure we thrive, not just survive, but thrive at the end of this uh, cost of living crisis, because all crises come to an end, right? It's important for us to prioritize. You can leverage these employee benefits platforms. They will have discounts to restaurants. Will they be our five-star Michelin stars that we want all the time? No, but they allow you to still yeah. enjoy, but still making sure that you're not breaking the bank. And I think when you access them and you leverage them the right way, we speak to clients that end up making maybe an additional, clearing an additional hundred pounds in their salary a month that they didn't have because they're just leveraging these platforms. Okay. And also there's some credit cards that I know that maybe they've rolled it back, but I remember when I was in Santander, they had the one, two, three account. Where you oh, yes. Back on bills and oh, yes. There's a lot of credit card companies. A lot of these challenger banks even also offer yeah. that as part of their, I guess, their value add to you. And some of it may sound like it's onerous, but literally it's just clicking a button. Yeah. Okay. And it's just you engaging with these platforms to get those discounts. So I would definitely, um, in every sense and in every way, encourage people to leverage these free things right now. Someone said they use Tesco, re this use Tesco rewards for days that our meals out. Uh, you see? Exactly. Yeah. And that's what we want. Mm -hmm. Because when you do this... and. Uh, I think one of the key things that affect us as people is perception. 
a lot of the times people don't engage in these things because there's stigmas attached to it. And a lot of the times that's true because there's stigmas att attached to money at the moment. But part of what we're also trying to do is break that stigma. Yeah. Create a bit more equity in, in gaining knowledge so that we can make informed decisions. Where as to what people think about your decision making and your current financial situation, if you know what your end goal is and you know that you've got a clear plan, then those perceptions won't bother you as much. By all means, leverage all these three things because right now is the best time for it. Yeah. Absolutely. We don't have any other option. Yeah. Okay, so, and then in terms of, like, the thermostat, you know, they say, I don't know how much money it saves if you turn the thermostat down in the winter by one degree or... To be fair, I've been trying to do my own research on that uh, yeah. because I was somebody who was, um, I was I, I was very trigger happy with that thermostat. Yeah. <laughs> this is what I'm nervous about. <laughs> I was very trigger happy until I saw the, 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 the my, my gas bill. Yeah. Month ago, I was like, um, actually, everybody, we're going to wear our coats. We're going to switch up everything. Yeah. <laughs> um you know, I, I, it's probably a little bit more extreme than and more dramatic. But in all honesty, I always say they do say that there's a certain temperature to keep a thermostat at. And typically that's 18 degrees. Okay. Yeah. That's in the cold. Yeah. <laughs> in the winter. Yeah. Um, it may not feel the warmest uh, because I've tried it. As I said, I had to just try it out to see how it was before things got really warm. But I think there's logic in it because apparently that's when your boilers and, and the gas, et cetera, that's when your energy is a little bit more energy efficient. So you want to try and maintain that as you possible. You don't want to go below 18. You don't want to go below 18 because you end up really cold. But yeah. if you try and keep it at 18, and the thermostat is not for you to keep playing with. That's also another thing that I learned recently. I used to, I'm always playing, you know, turn it up. Turn no, because you're actually create, utilizing more energy, forcing your house to adjust to different temperatures. Okay. So you want to keep it at a constant and you'll find that even your body will end up acclimatizing, given that, you know, the temperature disparity is on too, too much. You end up acclimatizing to some of these temperatures. But if you have children, etc., I think it's always good to consult someone else i'm not a professional in that yeah okay that's good to know it's about if you can keep it consistent that's better possibly about 80 um yeah energy efficient um okay i think we're getting some really good tips on how you can use coupons and i mean obviously as well even on i was like cereal boxes have free day outs and, <laughs> exactly which is good and then if you have a little bit of money maybe you've saved a bit of money in the pandemic yeah. With interest rates going up, would you advise somebody to save that money or invest that money or use it to pay down debts? Huh. That is a very interesting question. Before I do answer that, I'll have to say I'm not a financial advisor. Yeah. But so I don't want anyone to take on what I would do in this situation as the advice for you to act on. Everyone's decision is going to obviously be impacted by their financial circumstance, their goals, their plans, etc. But at the moment, personally, with a more spare cash at hand, I am choosing to invest. Um, and when I say invest more on the markets um, than anything else, uh, because of just interest rates, cash in the bank is not really that great. Uh, some of the ISAs are not really giving you the great best returns. So for me, it's typically stocks and shares, ISAs, and then maybe looking at what else is on the markets for you, NFTs and different funds that you can put your money into. Um, so, But I do this because I do have a planner that I work with. They understand my risk profile and my appetite. Hey, when someone just doing it, or would you recommend they seek out a professional? I would, I think more than ever, and, and I'm not saying it, from a place of arrogance. I think it'll be remiss of us to, um, where the where our economy is and where people are, things are very uncertain. Yeah. Um, and I'm not saying and speaking of these things as if you should be doing well from a place of judgment or trying to point out your, your flaws and how you're managing your finances. If anything, this is more me just saying there's no better time than now to just sit down with someone to review your finances because yeah. if they can help you do better right now you need it yeah 
it is definitely for the betterment for us in the short and medium long medium term to get guidance and direction, especially if we've got some goals and objectives we're planning to meet in the next, I don't know, year to two years. And lad with everything that's going on, sit down with somebody. Yeah. Okay. So you yeah. you offer that service and then a few other Oh, we do offer that service from our wealth management business. We do have advisors that we work with to provide support when we do provide education. Um, but just sort of going back to your question in terms of if you want to, if you do have spare cash, sit down with someone. If you don't have spare cash, sit down with somebody. It is, it, you'll be surprised how many people also just attach getting professional help around their finances with, with surplus. Um, when in, <laughs> the reality of things if you're taught to do better with little you do better with much so yeah. let's really be in a place where we are being informed of our decision making by getting the support and guidance that's out there yeah brilliant and we talked a bit about before we came on the call so then uh, if, you, if money's tight in the moment which mm -hmm. be for people, is now the time to on pension would you recommend someone stop paying into their pension or forgetting and we've talked about forgetting insurances so we've got life insurance too money I mean, the simple answer is no. <laughs> but again, I always have to go back and say it's easy for, for people like myself to say that because we're not in that situation. But if you are really tight on cash, I would not advise you to stop putting money into the, into the pension. Sacrifice even a small bit because on the other end of it, your employer is giving you free money, right? And you don't want to rob your future to sustain yourself for today. I think one thing that I said earlier was the things about crises is, is they come to an end. If you decide to go this route now, when this situation blows over, which it will, the, the economy has always recovered time and time again, you will come out not necessarily thriving and that's not what we want. So definitely do not, do not, if you can help it, do not go into your pension. There's different ways that we can try and explore before we even go that route. And I'm not saying, and I'm, I'm trying to really also be sensitive to what people are going through in saying this. I, I speak to people that are now selling clothes on Vinted and trying to find creative ways of just generating income with what they have. There will be stuff in the house that you can sell to just try and make up in some way, but don't go for your pension. It's never the best option. So that's the first one. Um, what was the other question that you asked me? What are you saying about life insurance? So this life be insurance. You want to get life insurance because it's a lot of money. It is a lot of money. It is. It is. It is a lot of money. Um, with life insurance, I am a little bit more, um, I guess, in the middle. Um, if you cannot afford it, for example, but you work for a company that gives you death and service, then I can forgive that because that death and service almost works the same way. But if you lose that job, you, it doesn't follow you. Yeah. Whereas life insurance builds up over time, et cetera, in terms of okay, the so type of... Okay, so if someone got diagnosed, you know, God forbid, with cancer or something, and all you had was death and service, then you had to leave that job, then you wouldn't have any insurance. You wouldn't. So... But if so, that's why I say I'm I'm a little bit in the middle. But again, you also want to review your existing uh, plans, goals, and your circumstances. In my situation, if ever anything did happen, I know my company have got a good death and service policy, so I could maybe forego my life insurance for a short term, very finite short term, and I'll need to be very intentional about that before reenacting it again, because I know that I've got that to fall back on. But typically, I would say don't try. Some of these things, they may seem like inconvenient things, but they help so many ways. I'm a product of someone taking out life insurance. And, and I told you, Elizabeth, my, my dad passed away and he didn't have, whilst he was a very wealthy businessman in, in my country, yeah. he didn't plan well. He didn't foresee himself dying. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't. Yeah. And but, but my mom had, you know, her sister, was, she was working in the insurance space. She had encouraged her to take out life insurance on, on him. 
if she had not, um, just given where I'm from, I'm from, from Zimbabwe, it's very patriarchal. So women are really second class citizens in the worst way possible. Um, all his businesses, all his assets, they were distributed amongst his brothers. The wives are just then whatever remnants are left, they are left whatever there is. If she did not take up this life insurance, yeah. which she then used to buy a home, which she then used to help us in school, etc., we wouldn't be here now. Yeah. So life insurance is a very personal thing for me, which is why I say I am in the middle. I understand why people may forego it, but I need you to understand the implications of not having it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It will help yeah. your family. It's, it's bigger than you, especially with people people that have children. It's, it's bigger than you. It's bigger than this crisis. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so we've sort of talked about searching on the government website, seeing what benefits are open to you, maybe speaking to a benefits advisor, see if you can yes. some of those make sure you're not missing out on anything that you're yeah. um, Speaking to your employee uh, benefits team, and um, yes, what benefits are on offer to you and what will, um, what will work for you and your family and how you can access yes. them. And everything, obviously, as Jessica said, every little helps. And someone said about Tesco rewards, I think next, other companies will probably do something Similar, you can also look oh, at many. cards and some of the book challenger banks as well. Yes. Um, and then we've talked about to try and how whether you should be investing or uh, paying down debt. Um, yes. And then we talked about the importance of trying to keep up your pension, even if you have to reduce it, and life insurance, life insurance. Someone said as well, there's a difference between life insurance you if you die a little, little illness if you're diagnosed with something nasty but i'm sure to a certain amount there's a difference yeah yes there is a difference that's why you also with, with life insurance they do ask your personal circumstances and what your preferences are and different insurance will provide uh, different packages to meet those objectives um, some of them will cover things like critical illness some of them won't yeah. So it's important for you. Sure. And she can get away, like, stack it down, doesn't it? In yes. Less, with your mortgage, or it just stays the same. Um, it depends. It depends with, again, it depends with uh, which sort of insurance you go for. Because some of them, the premiums sort of go up, but, it, but the payouts are larger at the end of it because um, it's constantly going, um, not constantly going. Um, the payouts are increasing over time. The more, you know, especially the younger you sign on to it. Um, and which is why I'm always encouraging people with children take out life insurance on your kids because by the time they're older and they maintain it, it's a different story for them. Um, well, you can take out life insurance on kids, actually. You can. And personal pensions, even. Um, it's also another good thing that you can do. And you don't even have to start by anything big. It can just be five pounds a month or three pounds a month. Um, by the time they're 20, they have a good pension pot waiting for them before they even go into the world of work. So there are different things and different nuances you can you can do, especially as women. Um, and and I'm, this is not me assuming that everyone has children or wants to go down that route. Yeah. But there will be different things that you can do to help them and your family be set off in a positive way. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, so this is why it is worth maybe having a chat with the financial advisor, just seeing what you can do, even if it's just a small amount away. Yes, indeed. I definitely co-sign that. Sit down with somebody um, and be honest. Be honest. You'd be surprised the cases that we see. We see so many people um, and, and, and there's a lot of speculation when it comes to money. Uh, people always assume people, certain job titles and people that get paid a certain amount are in so much of a better financial standing, which is why they would need a financial advisor. Yeah. A lot of the times, whilst they may earn more, their expenses are equally more. So they may actually have, in terms of disposable income, something that's similar to someone who does not earn as much. So you want to be cognizant of that and yeah. be more proactive. If they are aware of their situation and still go out and get financial advice, what is stopping you? said quite a lot of employers do health cash plans where you can claim health 
claim for health related classes, classes, dentistry. Just have to yes. claim them. Yes, private dental care and other things. Um, again, important to speak to your employer to understand what those things cover. And I think some of them even, some of them may not cover fertility related issues. And some employers also have plans that cover fertility related issues. So make sure you're finding out what that means for you, especially now and when it comes to your family plans, you know, in the short and long run. Absolutely. So there's quite a lot of research people have to do, isn't there? Now, like, now I suppose it's a good time to do it before the winter hits. <laughs> and we're all sort of... Winter is coming. <laughs> yeah, winter is coming. So now it's like the car, well, I say calm, it's not really. Yeah. And to be, to be fair, this is probably the calm before the storm. Things are set to get worse. And I'm not trying to fear monger in any way. We don't have heating on at the moment. So. No, we don't. But you can imagine what's going to happen when we do. Yes. Right. Um, and it's, 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 it's accumulation of many things. So it's very important. Whilst we're saying this in jest and we may be sounding quite light about it. Things are, are going to get more uncomfortable before we get to a good place of comfort. So yeah. if we are not being intentional with everything, and I'm I, and I really mean it, I'm being being pedantic with everything. Know what's coming into your account. Know what's going out. Yeah. Really know what's going out. Even those small coffee, yeah. coffee bills that you're paying every week when you're going into the office, they accumulate to something more. So understand if they are worth it right now or if there's an alternative that you can just put in place until things settle. Yeah. And also automate payments. One of the things I'm always talking to people about is the notion of automating a lot of things. So if you are someone that does have excess cash and is also looking at ways that you can help yourself, I would always say, and this is actually not for someone of excess, excess cash, people in general. One of the things that I'm now um, advocating more for is pay yourself first. When it comes to your salary coming, pay yourself first. Um, I know a lot of people... What do you mean pay yourself first? So most people would always pay their bills, pay for every other thing. Yeah, because people get paid and then the bills seem to go out the first month. They, they just work. come out, Right and then they don't pay themselves. So then paying yourself is essentially safe. It's a nice way of saying safe. Put something for your future. Just put away something for your future. So you end up being the person that's not paid but doing all the work. And if it was a different scenario and it wasn't in the context of you, you would, you would never encourage your friend to work for someone for free. Yeah. You'd always say, Where, what are you paying? What are they paying you? So you want to pay yourself first. And you do that by automating those payments. It could be just pay yourself to start with maybe an hour's worth of your wages a month, just to start. Okay. So work so out how much. Yeah, Sorry. put it away in savings. And it could be 20 pounds if, if that's what you make an hour or 12 pounds. But just go through life knowing that, you know what? I got paid this month and I paid myself something. You, know, you remind me, when I first started, do you know what I started doing? I should do it. I used to have a holiday fund. And every, <laughs> every, when I got paid, I'd put a bit of money and whatever it was, 50 quid or whatever, into the holiday fund. And then, yeah. And then at the end of the year, I knew I was like, I've paid my holiday now. <laughs> you see? And yeah, that's really that. good. I've done that for ages. I might have to do so maybe you need to go back and do that. But literally, this is how I always get people started because a lot of the conversations that we also have is, oh, where can I start if I don't have anything? Well, to be fair, there's always going to be something in your in your expenses that you spent on that wasn't necessary. And if we try and identify what those things are every month, those can be the amounts that you pay yourself first if you really feel you're stretched to the point where there's nothing coming. Yeah. Right? Pay yourself first, maybe five pounds a month. Standing order, it just goes into a different account or an ISA at the moment. I'd encourage a stocks and shares ISA because of interest rates, etc. But we could be, you know, it could be different. And as things improve, you find that, oh, because it's so automatic, you start to spend money less than five pounds. You won't even account for it. After three months, I'll then say make it 10 pounds. Again, you go through life and you won't even start to notice it, even though you're 10 pounds less. After three months, double it. Twenty pounds, yeah, yeah. and that will help you start to accumulate some form of savings pot for yourself, where you don't have anything to start. 
Yeah. But pay yourself less. Yeah. Good advice. Good way because a lot of don't have savings today. Some people don't have savings. It is a good way. And when you think about your savings, it's also important to look at it in three ways. Um, I, as I guess my mother's always had me in the kitchen, you know, with, I'm from a, a culture where women are always put in the kitchen, which is quite interesting given the space I work in. But she always used different analogies to help me understand what savings was. So she said, you have a larder, you have a fridge and you have a freezer or you have like a pantry what other people call it, your fridge and your freezer. Um, and your pantry is usually for that stuff that you want to access quickly, right? And then your fridge is the stuff that's got that expiry date. It could be the chicken that you want to cook in five days, the milk that you need to use. There's a save by, use by date attached to it. And then your freezer is for that stuff that's in there for a while. You want to break down your money or your savings into these three categories. Yeah. You want to understand which products on the market that help you achieve these. So your larder could be just that cash in the bank, but you don't want too much of it because it goes to waste, interest rates, inflation, right? Your fridge could be those short-term expenses that could be put in different types of ices. Bearing in mind, you understand how those ISAs work? What are the penalties for drawing out early? Do you want it to be a LISA, for example, or is it just a cash ISA, or is it just the stocks and shares ISA? Understand what that that purpose, or is it just a, a savings account of sorts? What are the risks associated with putting in this short-term savings tool? And then you want your freezer, yeah. right? Or freezer, like pension or Things like your pension. If you're someone that is trying to get on the property market now, unlike before where you could save for a property in a year or two, it's taking people a bit longer. So that freezer savings pot contributes to those sort of purchases. But if you go through life remembering your larder, your fridge, your freezer, think about your finances that way. Larder, fridge, freezer. Pay myself. Larger, free, freezer. I think you'll probably be in a better place in the long run. I love that analogy. That is such a good. I'm going to literally now be going through my bank now after this. I'm going to be going through it. Trying to get rid of that. Exactly. So, yeah, looking, no, I don't know. Mine, it's now when you're making my money. Yeah. Probably not been very financially well educated. God knows what it's all in. So, yeah, I'll be looking at the interest rates now and checking. So, it's been amazing. Thank you so, so much for, for joining us today. If anyone's got any final questions, Terry, please pop them in comments but where can people find you connect with you learn more about you maybe think about looking in financial planning position um well you can find me so i'm on linkedin as terry okoye always drop me a message i'm always happy to speak to anyone and provide as much support especially in light of everything that's going on don't bury your head in the sand and trust me there's zero judgment when when we do speak um you can also contact us as an enterprise, Morrison Wild Wellbeing. Yeah. Um, we can support you, even though we might work with businesses. So if you're someone in HR and you want to come and provide this sort of education to your employees, we're happy to come and support yeah. in that yeah. space. Um, or if you just want um, advice and just to speak to someone professionally, again, message me or message us at Morrison Wild Wellbeing and we can signpost you to one of our advisors and guess what they will do it they'll give you a free consultation so you won't have to pay for it so definitely get in touch with us and we can support you brilliant oh i loved it thank you so so much we'll put all those links um with show notes so thank you so much for joining us today thank you for everyone that's watched and it's a hot day so appreciate that um yeah thank you it's been no great. <laughs> thank, thank you so you. much elizabeth i was really nervous if i had to be honest because i was like oh gosh this there's a studio dear me is my makeup okay but i hope what i said made sense oh yeah it really makes i love the phrase when the pants i'm gonna look like the thing you i don't know <laughs> i hope it makes sense and if anything if you can take away anything pay yourself first a lot of fridge freezer pay yourself first a lot of fridge freezer thank you yeah much. Thank uh, you so much, Elizabeth. Have a lovely day otherwise. Thank you for everyone that's watched today. See you soon. All right. Bye.